Hi guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And today we have a big topic to talk about. We're gonna talk about phonics. And I'm going to try to explain to you why I think phonics is so foundational to teaching children to read, and then a little bit about how I teach phonics. So um, there's kind of two big methods to teaching phonics that people follow. One is, or not teaching phonics, to teaching reading. And one is more of a whole language approach where you focus on sight words and getting children to memorize um, words. And then the other approach is the phonetic approach where you teach children sounds. And then they use those sounds and those phonetic rules to build a foundation so that they can go ahead and read um, harder words in context. So before I get into all of that, I wanted to um, tell you that I wrote a blog po post about all of this and I will leave a link below to that blog post so you can go back and read um, that if you want and you want more information and it kind of um, breaks down everything that I'm going to share with you today and so if you're interested in that I'll leave that below and I'm also going to be kind of looking I have it here on my phone my blog post pulled up so I can refer to it so I don't leave anything out um, so if you see me looking down that's, that's what I'm looking at um, so first of all I found that teaching phonics in a systematic way um, is the best way to do it and I have never had any child not be able to learn how to read. And phonics and phonetic foundation really helps all children, but especially children with special needs. Now, um, just to give you a quick background on who I am, in case this, this may be your very first video ever watching of mine, if it is, hello, please subscribe um, to my channel. If you enjoy videos on education, and um, especially in the primary grades for children um, from ages three up through um, second, third grade, but that's my specialty. So my specialty really is kindergarten-ish grade, grades, but um, so to give me, give you a little bit of background on who I am, a former um, elementary school teacher. I taught um, first grade, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. I spent most of my time teaching first grade. So um, my focus was on teaching reading. So I was one of those teachers that um, helped guide other teachers in the the um, teaching of reading process. So in literacy, and um, so I was a literacy coach in a way as I was teaching. Um, I mentored other teachers, uh, newer teachers in, in the field. And then um, I generally was the teacher who had the students who needed the most reading intervention, um, be just because I, my principal saw that um, that was really where my specialty was. And so that's what I worked with a lot was those um, children who really needed the help. And, uh, and it was wonderful and I really enjoyed it. But now um, I'm enjoying something much more. And that is I am a homeschool mom to six little boys and I have taught my three oldest how to read. And I'm currently um, in the process of teaching my son who just turned four how to read. Um, and so uh, we are just having a great time and I have two more little ones after him that I will be teaching how to read as well. Um, so I also, I have, a, a, my bachelor's degree is in elementary education with um, a focus on literacy instruction. And then my master's degree is on, um, it's also in education and it's a focus on uh, mentorship and uh, school leadership aspects. So um, that's just a little bit of background on me. Okay, so getting back into phonics instruction. Um, so I teach phonics in a systematic way. So I start with the easiest sounds and then I progress um, to the more complex sounds after that. And um, this gives kids the ability to decode harder words later on. So if you teach them the foundations of sounds, then they can use those sounds and those phonetic rules and they can apply them to harder, more complex words. So later on, as they're um, reading and decoding, it, it gives them those skills. They've, they've remembered those sounds and those rules. Now, of course, we know that the English language doesn't always follow rules, right? But if we give them the overarching rules, as this is usually what applies, then they can, they can, for the most part, those other words that don't follow the rules, they can memorize. So that would be the whole language, um, adding in a little bit of whole language to your phonics instruction. But that's, that's at the very end after you've given them the foundation. Okay, so um, 
let's see. Uh, so the goal of phonics instruction is to give kids the, ch the tools they need to move from the daily work of analyzing all of those words and all of those letter sounds to them learning, uh, and then reading to learn. So it's going from phonics is learning to read. And then once children have their phonics, um, down pat, then they will move into reading to learn. So the difference is when you're learning to read, you're just decoding words and trying to um, read the words that are on the page. But when you're reading to learn, that's what we all do as adults. We read things so that we can learn and gather information, right? So, um, so phonics gives them the foundation, they're learning to read, and then they can move into the rest of their life, which is reading to learn. Um, so how do I teach phonics? Okay, so as I mentioned, I take a systematic approach. So I start with the easiest sounds and then I go on to the harder sounds. So first thing I do is I teach students to recognize alphabet letters and their sounds. I especially focus my attention on the short vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. Um, I don't bring in Y yet because Y is, it can be a vowel, but I bring it in later on when we do long vowels. So the very first thing I do is we do alphabet, and beginning sounds um, of words, and that includes focusing a lot on those short vowel sounds. So A says A, E says F, I says I, and so on. All right, that's the first thing I do. So once children know all of their alphabet sounds, um, they can recognize that's the letter A and it says A, that's the letter C and it says K. Once they can recognize that, all of their letter sounds, then I move on to the next step. The next step is to teach students to segment and blend short vowel words. So words like cat or um, dog or big or um, cup, okay? Words that have a short vowel in the middle of two consonants, those CVC words, they're, they're called consonant vowel consonant words. So then we work on segmenting and blending. Segmenting is saying the sound and blending is blending the sounds together. So if you were gonna do the word cat, segmenting would be to say the sounds individually, k at, and then blending would be to blend those sounds together. Cat. And um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen many, many um, fun, hands-on ways we do practice that. And if you haven't seen my other videos, I highly recommend going back and um, checking some of those out. Okay, so then um, after I teach them to segment and blend, the third step is that I teach the students the long vowel sounds. So um, I tell the students that, you know, you've learned, you've learned what the vowels are, they're A, E, I, O, and U. But some, uh, the vowels can, are special because they can make more than one sound. Um, and so they can make a long vowel sound. And when we put two of them together, they make long vowel sounds. And then we practice the, the, the phonics rules that go along with that, such as vowel teams, E and A, and um, E and E, and, and I and E. And, um, and then we also talk about magic E, where if you put an E at the end of a word, it tells the first vowel to say its name. So if you had the word, um, can, it'd be C-A-N, can, but if you add an E at the end, the E tells the A to say its name, so now it's the word cane. Um, and we call him Magic E because when you put him on the end, it's kind of like magic and he tells the other vowel to say his name. Um, I've also called him Bossy E before, but um, that can get confusing because when you get into um, our controlled vowels, R is Bossy R as well. So um, I, some, I now tend to, to call him um, Magic E. Okay, so then um, after we do long vowels, the uh, last step is to move on to then all the other complex phonics rules. So that would be patterns such as digraphs and trigraphs, diphthongs, um, R control vowels, hard and soft, C and G, um, and any other special sound pattern that um, you can think of. <laughs> so, um, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and I am going to show you my phonics curriculum and how I take all of what I just told you and I've turned it into a curriculum to now teach those um, phonics uh, rules and teach all of, all of that phonics foundation in a fun, hands-on approach to learning phonics. And I really hope you stay with me. We're going to go right into it and I'm gonna show you my new phonics for reading program. All right, friends, so here is my new phonics program. It is called Phonics for Reading. And um, I have two ways I have organized it. I have put paperwork into a binder, and then I have put all of the activities into a um, 
Sterilite bin that looks like this and I have made labels for them if you um, purchase this curriculum You will get the labels and you will get everything that you see here um, in a download It's a downloadable program and you can print out everything yourself and go from there. Okay, so um, This program is standards based and when I open up my binder here You're gonna see that I made some tabs. I made a different tab for each unit So there are nine units in this curriculum and currently only unit one is available but if you purchase the entire curriculum now, it is highly, highly discounted because you will get all of the subsequent units for free, you guys. So um, I would suggest checking out the link that I leave below if you're interested. Okay, but getting into it. So this um, curriculum is standard based. So each unit um, tells you the standards that are going to be covered. So in unit one, here's unit one, it tells you the skills and standards that students are going to, unit one is all about the alphabet. Cause like I told you, I do a systematic approach. So I start with the easiest um, sounds and I work my way up. So unit one is learning the alphabet. So students are going to follow letters from left to right, top to bottom and page by page. They're going to recognize the name of all upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet. They're going to isolate and pronounce the initial letter sounds. And they're going to demonstrate basic knowledge of one-to-one -one letter sound correspondences by producing the primary sound or many of the most frequent sounds for each consonant. Okay, so by the primary sound, I mean like for A, it's going to be the short sound, A. Ah. Um, and then the primary sound for the consonants as well. So for C, it would be K, not the soft sound, um, which the soft sound is the S sound. Um, so it's gonna be the frequent, most common sounds. Okay, so it's basically just learning the alphabet. And then what I did is in here, I printed out um, the pages, excuse me, for each of the activities. So there are seven different um, learning activities included in each unit of the curriculum. So one of them is build it strips. Another one is there's activity centers. There are phonics readers for each unit. There are fluency strips for each unit. And I'm gonna show you these guys, by the way. Um, there are flip it books. The, this is, I think, my favorite thing about each unit. Um, there are flashcard sticks. And there are fill it in mats. So um, those are the seven components of each unit. And I'm gonna show you how I use those components to teach phonics. So as I mentioned, I keep all of the activities inside a little plastic bin. I'm going to have a different Sterilite bin like this for each of my units. This is unit one. I'm gonna just show you unit one because that's the one that is currently um, available ready to use. Unit one is all about the alphabet. And the very first thing that I do is um, I use these alphabet sticks. So I have them all in the plastic bin or plastic bag here. And I printed out the um, informational pages on a label and put that on top of my bag just to keep it organized. And what you're going to get is you get three um, different types of alphabet sticks. Now the reason I call them alphabet sticks is because I attach mine to um, little sticks like this, craft sticks, I guess you would call them. And the reason I do that is because I really like how interactive it makes it. Um, you do not have to do that. These are just, they're flashcards. You do not have to attach them to the craft sticks. You could even attach them to a little ring if you want, um, however you want to do it. But I like the um, craft sticks because what we can do is we can put them in a cup and the students can um, t pick one out and then they can say the sound to me and they can say the, um, the picture clue. So since we're only working on um, the alphabet in this unit, uh, it's only alphabet letters. So you get one set that just has the capital and lowercase letters like you see here. The um, Another set that you get has the capital, lowercase letter, and a picture clue for that letter, as you see here in these ones. And then the other set you get is just the picture clues. So I'll show you those as well. Okay, so um, what we do is the very first thing we do each day is we practice our flashcards for memory. So um, memorizing the phonic sounds is extremely important. So what we will do is we will start with the ones that have the um, capital lowercase letter and the picture and we will hold it up we will go through each and every letter each day and I will hold it up and then he has to say that the students have to say the chant. So they would say H says huh, in hippo. H says huh, huh, huh. and then we go on. I says it in igloo. I says it, 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 and we would go on. So we would go through the entire stack 
every single day for memory practice, saying that chant. Um, another thing we uh, will do is I will, like I said, I, I think I said, <laughs> we will put them in a cup, the students will take one out and then they will say the chant. Um, to me so that way they're kind of picking them out themselves um, one thing I really like to do if you haven't seen my other videos is um, I use play-doh in these little containers and then they can put the sticks in the play-doh and it holds the sticks up okay and so this is just a great way to display them and to do activities with them okay so um, here you can see how easily it holds the sticks up okay so another thing we do is with the um, ones that don't have the picture clue, we will hold it up and they will have to say, S says S in sun, S says S, S, S. They will have to say it without the picture clue there, so they're memorizing the picture clue. Um, or we can do it the opposite way with a picture clue and then they have to say the word. So we will, we will do the sticks that have the picture clues and they will have to say, um, C says K in cat, C says K. So they're recalling the letter that goes along with this picture clue. Um, and then another thing you can do is you can put the ones with the a letter in one thing of Play-Doh, and then they have to find the picture clue that would match and put it in the other Play-Doh so that they have to match them up. So that's just an activity that you can do as well. But we mostly use our flashcard sticks for memory practice, and it's just a great review first thing before we do anything else to practice our sounds. And so after you've moved on from this unit, the alphabet unit, you'll see in subsequent units it's going to have harder sounds for them to learn and they're also going to be, I'm going to add them to um, craft sticks just like this and we are going to use them for memory practice. The next component to each unit of my curriculum are fluency strips. So students need to be able to get quick and fluent at their sounds. And fluency strips look like this. There's two different types. There's ones that have the letters, and then there's ones that have the pictures. Um, and so for this specific unit, since it's only the alphabet, all you're going to see is alphabet practice. You can go ahead and laminate them like I did. I added them, added a book ring on them just to kind of keep them together um, that way. Or you can just print each one. If you have a big classroom you're doing it with and you just want to print them out for a quick um, fluency practice uh, on just a half sheet, regular half sheet, you can do that as well. They're great for that. Okay, so um, what the children will do for fluency practice is I'm going to use a dry erase marker because I laminated mine and I'm going to allow my student to do it over and over again. Um, because it is laminated, but what they will do is they're going to just say each sound. So the dots underneath neath each letter represent um, segmenting each sound and saying it. So they're going to say each sound like this. A, A, S, W, R, K, M, I, O, P, D, A. And then after they say each sound, if they do the whole thing correct, they get to color in a smiley face. Then they're going to do it again, and they'll color in another smiley face, and a third time and color in the last smiley face. Now, if the student messes up or is incorrect, you need to make sure you correct them. So here's how I correct them. So let's say the student is going along and they, they make a mistake. A, A, S, D. Okay, they've made a mistake. I will stop them right there and I will say... W says whoop in wagon. W says whoop, whoop, whoop. They will have to repeat me. W says whoop in wagon. W says whoop, whoop, whoop. Then they will have to go back to the beginning and start again. A, A, S, whoop, er, k, m, i. You get the idea. So whenever they mess up, you have them repeat the, the, the chant for that letter, the sound and then have them go back to the beginning. It is a great way to practice fluency and we're making sure we're catching their mistakes. Now if you do have a big classroom and they're doing this on their own, you can have them do it to a neighbor. So when I used to work in the classroom, I would have two students sit together 
one student would be saying the sounds, doing the fluency, and the other student would be sitting next to them. If the student next to them hears a mistake, the student next to them will remind them of the sound. So it's not only helping the student who is doing it, but the student next to them is also working on the sounds because they're trying to hear any mistakes. And then if there is a mistake, they have to correct their student. So um, both students are getting something out of it. And then I would have them switch. So I would say, okay, um, Student A is going to practice fluency, you know, and then um, I would have the partner switch and that, you know, in a little bit, then the other student would do the fluency and the other student would be the checker. Um, so anyways, just to give you a heads up, if you are a um, teacher watching this versus a home educator who might just be with one student, um, you may even be a uh, reading coach watching this who has just a few students. Um, and so I don't, I don't know, but I uh, just wanted to give you that heads up. Okay, the other way that they are going to practice it is um, with the picture clue. So they will go along and say the sound and the picture clue. So b, bear, eh, elephant, p, pig, a, uh, umbrella, eh, apple, ah, uh, ostrich. You get the idea they're going to go through the whole thing. If it's all correct, they will color in their smiley face and do it again. Uh, they're going to be doing it three times because obviously we want good fluent readers. And there are um, 10 different um, cards here so that students have plenty of um, practice before they move on to the next unit in the curriculum. The next unit is going to be on uh, short vowel words. Another component to this curriculum are the phonics readers. And each unit will have phonics readers that focus on the particular sounds covered in that unit. Of course, I'm doing unit, showing you unit one, which is the alphabet. So you're gonna see some of the alphabet readers. So there are readers for each and every letter of the alphabet. And then there is one reader that is just alphabet animals. And um, I printed this one out in black and white. Everything comes in color or black and white. So if you don't have a color printer, I know a lot of schools don't allow you to color a uh, print in color. Um, everything comes in black and white as well, which works just fine. Okay, so I attached mine to book rings. You do not have to do that. You could also, I'll show you another example. You could staple yours. Um, when I used to staple mine for when I had a big classroom, I would use um, tape and then I would put tape over the staples. I didn't, I didn't on this example, but I would put tape over the staples so that um, their little hands would not get caught by any of these staples and get, you know, cut or anything. So just to give you a heads up. Um, so you can staple them or you you can put them in book rings. Um, I want to show you how I um, put these books together. I do give directions in the curriculum on how to do it, but sometimes seeing it in person um, or seeing it in a video is better. I know I prefer to see it in a video than try to read how to how to do something. Okay, so um, what you do is you just print out the page. The pages are going to print out like this. So you just print them out normally. Okay, this is how they look. And then what you do is you fold them in half. You know, so the picture is on the outside. So this is how it would print. I fold it in half so the picture is on the outside. And that's all I have to do. I do the same thing for every single page. So this page printed out like this. I just fold it in half. Then you just put them together nicely. You don't have to cut anything. Just put them together in order. So there are page numbers on each page. As you can see here, like here's page number 11. And then here would be page number 12. And just make sure they're in order. Put them together like so. And then... Put your hole punches in. You can um, use book rings like, where did I put my book in there? Book rings like I did, or like I said, you can staple um, them together as well, especially these uh, little alphabet books because they are shorter than this longer ABC animal book. But either way, um, so then you're gonna just go ahead and put your little book ring in, in there after you've hole punched. And I have a three ring binder hole punch. Um, which works kind of nice. I just do two punches in it. Okay, so anyways, that's how it works. And then what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna segment the sounds. And so here are the dots. So they're gonna go through each page. Ah, 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 alligator. B, 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 bear, and so on. You get the idea, okay? And then the individual readers look like this. Let me show you letter A. Um, I don't have all the readers. There is a reader for every single letter of the alphabet. I just have A and B out here for you. Um, but, so here's letter A, and what I would have them do is even on the cover page, we would talk about um, what a cover of a book is, and this is capital A and this is lowercase a, and then we would say the sound. A says a and apple, 
A says a a a. A says a in alligator. A says a a a. A says a in ant. A says a a a. And I realize this sounds very repetitive, but that is the point. The more repetitive you are, the more the easier they're going to retain the information. I have found this to be true for all kids of all ages of all learning styles. Okay, so then of course they're going to do each page. A a a apple. And the reason I'm showing you my finger is because it's so important to have the students touch with their fingers. Um, I even, if you've seen my other videos, uh, when we segment out sounds, we even use manipulatives to do it. So I'm going to show you, um, many of you teachers or homeschool educators um, may have little uh, counting bears. And counting bears are fun for segmenting. So what I have them do is I just have them put a bear down for each um, sound as they say it. So a, 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 apple. A, you get the idea. A, a, alligator, and so on. You can use any kind of manipulative you have. I even like to use little circular erasers as they're segmenting out. It just gives them a tactile way to to take um, a manipulative, put it on the page, and say the sound. So this is what um, the A book looks like. And then they have a, a repetitive um, picture there again. So those are the phonics readers for the first unit. Another component to each unit of this curriculum are hands-on activity centers. So I'm not gonna show you each center um, from this unit in detail, but there are three centers for each uh, unit of the curriculum. And um, the first one here is build and match beginning sounds. I also have a Pirates Ahoy beginning sounds. And the last one is a one, uh, paint. it's got a painting theme um, where the kids do beginning sounds. And let me just kind of really quickly show you this one. Um, they would take a card Here's the letter E, and then they would use snap cubes to build the letter E. So they use the picture here, look at it, um, count how many, you know, snap cubes they're going to need. They build it with their snap cubes, and then they have to find the card that begins with the letter E. So in here I have, um, comes with these different cards, as you see here, and they would have to find, there's an elephant in here. Here it is. And they would have to match it up on their card. So that's the first center. The first center is building the letter and then matching the beginning sound. Um, and then I'm not going to go through, but really quickly, the uh, Pirates Ahoy Center, they have to cover up beginning sounds and it's got a pirate theme. And the um, painting one has, a, uh, they roll a die and then they have to cover up beginning sounds with manipulatives. So these are just a way to make it hands-on and a way to make it a lot of fun. Okay, you guys, my favorite component to each unit of my curriculum are the Flip It books. So I came up with this idea because um, I didn't want to make worksheets. I wanted to make something a little bit more interactive for the kids, um, but I also wanted them to be able to practice the sounds and be fluent at practicing them. So I made Flip It books. Um, and what they are is they are just different ways to practice um, the uh, phonics skill for that unit. And obviously we're on unit one, which is the alphabet. You can print them out and laminate them like I did so the kids can reuse them with dry erase markers, or you can just print them out. This one isn't laminated. And um, you can just have them do the book um, on a little half sheet. So if you have a big classroom and you just wanna each day give them one little half sheet for a quick review, you can do it that way. However you wanna do it, you do not have to print it in color like I did. You can print them in black and white, whatever you want. But let me get into it and show you how these flip books um, kind of work. I'm gonna grab book number one. Book number one looks like this and it is a mixed practice book. So um, you will see here I already did some of the activities <clears throat> in the book because I was showing you this in a different video. Um, but um, so for the first example here on this flip it book they are going to match the sound. So this is a mouse. What begins like mouse? Monkey. So we circled monkey. Here we have a well, what begins like well, we have a wagon, so we circled it. The next page is a little bit different. They had to trace the letters and then circle the sounds that match. So this is the letter E, and then they'd have to circle the pictures down here that begin with E. Same thing with B, circle the pictures that begin with B. It's just a mixed practice on beginning sounds. This one they have to write in the beginning sound, or you can use magnetic letters to um, put in there to make it more interactive. So these are uh, our magnetic letters. 
and um, I have them in this container. This is a container that you would normally keep beads in for like crafts and things like that. <clears throat> but I <clears throat> ordered it off of Amazon in order to keep our letters organized. And so what you can do instead of having the child write the letter with their mat with their dry erase marker or their pencil or something like that, you can have them whoop, go ahead and use magnetic letters like so just to make it a little bit more hands-on okay the next page here <clears throat> it says write the lowercase letter so it gives the child the capital letter and then you can see I've already written the lowercase letter for each of these you can also have them use the magnetic letters on this page and find their lowercase letter and go ahead and add it you know to the page like so Another um, page looks like this where they have to color in the beginning sound. So elephant begins with E, I colored it in. And monkey begins with M, I colored it in. Or you could have them use a manipulative <clears throat> to mark their answer. So here I have, um, let me show you here. I have just some of these little gems that I got at the dollar store. And what they can do is they can just take a gem and cover up their answer that way instead of using the um, dry erase marker. So. That just makes it a little bit more interactive as well. This page, they have to trace the um, line that matches the beginning sound. So here you can see I trace this line because D, uh, dog starts with D, and then I trace this line because star starts with S. Um, and so that's how this pay, this book, this Flip It book continues on like that. Um, and then the other Flip It books pretty much practice the same type of skills, but they're each specific. So like this one here, is a trace and match. So as you saw in that other book, they have to trace. So um, a alligator starts with A, so they would trace this line and so on. They would go through the book and just trace the ones that match. You could see that. And then um, book two looks like this. And this one is just all finding beginning sounds like you saw. And then book three begin, it looks like this and it is filling in beginning letters. And there's a word for each and every uh, letter, alphabet letter in this book, but they're mixed up so the kids can't go in order. So it's not like A, B, C, D, they're mixed up, okay? So, um, so this one is a great one for writing it with a dry erase marker or again, using their magnetic letters. And so every single unit of this curriculum will have flip it books like you see, but they will be practicing different um, phonics skills. Th these, you know, particular ones practice the alphabet because it's, they're all for unit one. Okay guys, we're getting to the end here. Um, this next component, um, every single unit has fill it in mats. So the mats are going to, um, all be different depending on what the unit is focusing on. So these ones are alphabet, obviously, because we're focusing on alphabet letters. And um, they look like this. And there's one for each and every letter of the alphabet. And what the kids have to do is they just have to use any kind of manipulatives you have to fill in the letters. So um, I, I'm going to use my little counting bears that I showed you earlier. And I'm just gonna start filling it in. I'm gonna show you how the students are supposed to do it. As they fill in the letters, they're supposed to say the sound. So they're gonna say, ah, ah, ah. You get the idea, it's repetitive, but they need to continue doing it so that um, they're learning the sound. Ah, 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 ah. And then that was uppercase A. Lowercase a also says ah, 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 ah. You get the idea. So you can use any kind of manipulatives you have. Here I'm using counting bears. You can use Play-Doh to fill it in. Have them make little um, balls of Play-Doh and then fill it in with little balls of Play-Doh. Ah. And then they'll do another one. Ah, ah, ah. And they'll fill it in. Or um, you can use the little gems that I showed you earlier. Or you can even use your little snap cubes and have them fill it in with snap cubes. I even have here some little cars um, just from my kids' room that they've been playing with and they, you can fill it in with little cars. Ah, ah, whatever you have around your house. And then um, practice each letter sound with these fun fill it in mats. Another thing really quick that you could have them do if you want to incorporate some handwriting practice into it is to use a dry erase marker and then just have them trace each letter and as they do it make sure they're saying the sounds so b b 
book is for bear. And um, there's a picture clue on each and every mat as well. The last component of e each unit of my curriculum are build it strips. And in this particular un unit on alphabet, I have two different types of build it strips. I have build it strips that work on just um, capital and lowercase letters. And then I have build it strips that work on beginning sounds of words. So let me show you really quick these ones. So these ones, all the children will do is they'll take a um, build it strip. And what they need to do this is um, magnetic letters. You could also have them write with dry erase markers, but I prefer the magnetic letter approach. Okay, so what they're going to do, and also if you don't have magnetic letters, another cool thing you can use are pieces from a, an alphabet puzzle. We have done that before too. Like a Melissa and Doug puzzle, we've used those a lot before too. Okay, so what um, they would do is they'll take a strip, they have to look at the picture and decide what letter says uh, does zebra begin with. And then um, they will put the capital letter and the lowercase letter on their mat. And then they'll go on. So what does yo-yo begin with? It begins with Y, correct? So they're gonna have to find their lowercase Y and their uppercase Y, okay? So they'll do that for all of them. I would suggest mixing them up, obviously. You don't want them in order so that the kids have to really think about what the, what the picture starts with. And then the other um, set that I wanted to show you here is I have words for every single alphabet letter. So here they have to look at the picture and they have to decide what does sun begin with? What letter of the alphabet? And then they would put it in the box with their magnetic letters. What does rat begin with? Rat begins with R. So they're going to go ahead and put their letter in there. So there's um, a card here for every single letter of the alphabet. All right, guys. We are at the end here. I appreciate it if you've watched all the way through this video. And I'm going to leave links below to where you can check out more about this curriculum. I'm going to leave a link to the um, blog post where I write about how and why I teach phonics. And I'm going to leave a link to where you can get the curriculum. Like I told you right now, it's um, currently highly discounted. Every time I add a new unit, the price will rise. Um, so check it out now if you can. And I know I've had so many people already purchase and leave some great feedback. So if you're interested in seeing what others have to say about um, this curriculum, look at the feedback before you purchase and see what they have to say. And we will see you next time, guys. Bye.